certain music, a lot of bars I can't relate to, but I just think they're fly, personally. Like when I listen to a lot of like Griselda, like Westside, like I just think they're fly. He said he stepped out looking like an off-white lookbook. Like that's like, like you just know he looks fly, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> I don't have that type of money to relate to that. Not yet, at least. Socials, I go by the name of Nikki Ghost, Two Wise, No Eyes. I'm a DJ, producer, curator. Yeah, bro, just a lover of everything. It's easier to tell you what I don't do than what I do at this point. Who's someone that you would say deserves their flowers? I don't know West Side Gun deserves his flowers more. This guy changed the game. Uh, I think like music is reverting back to, or at least hip hop itself is re reverting, reverting back to its roots. And I think he's a big, uh, it's a big influence on why that is. Everyone, the Griselda effect is real. And the pandemic, uh, pandemic really forced niggas to rap again because people were releasing music on dead ears. And I think he really, he really curated the sound of what today's hip hop is. Who's your favorite underrated artist at the moment? Mm -hmm. Favorite underrated artist at the moment. I uh, listen to a lot of drill music lately because of like who I've been keeping around me. So I've been listening to a lot of Bronx and Brooklyn drill. So like a lot of those guys. So like the, the Dougie B's, the K-Flocks, Diora, uh, Shawnee Bin Laden, all those guys. Like I think they're, they're making some special music. I think they're revitalizing New York sound. I think they're taking what, uh, building off of what Brooklyn did. And uh, definitely, Definitely pushing the boundaries. Me and uh, me and my boy were talking about it yesterday. Pop music is definitely going to be what drill music is after that Cardi record, because those samples are are ridiculous and they're just going to be charting all over the place. Songs of the summer are going to be popping off, you know. Canada on on the world stage. <clears throat> music a rap? Um, I think we're I think we're right behind the states. Talent wise, like yo, the biggest artist in the world is Canadian. The second biggest artist in the world is Canadian. You can argue the third biggest artist in the world is Canadian as well. Who are you talking about? Drake, uh, Weekend, and Bieber. You can argue, like, you can argue they're they're all at the top of their game and they're all Canadian, you know what I mean? So it's, we're, in, we're in a very good spot. A lot of Canadians are winning Grammys. Shout out Kate Trinata, shout out Sean Leon. Like, it's just beautiful to see, like, uh, we're getting a lot of recognition. I think this is where the foundation is being set. And you know, I think we're gonna have a good next few years, you know? Where do you find your music? Let's say for someone who's, you know, super busy. You know, like finding music is low key can sometimes feel like a chore. You're always finding music though as a DJ. Like anytime, I, you know like how that there's that meme of that, that, that nigga pulling out his phone to Shazam thing and never want to give, you know, like I've learned, I've learned from you that you got to do that. You got to do that. You always got to be Shazamming everything. Like you like something, you like, you, you, you maybe even like an eight or a 16 of what you heard, like you got to Shazam it. Cause it's like, yo, this can be used for this. I can sample this. I can use this. I can use this. So like, I'm always Shazamming stuff and on my like spare time. I'm always watching YouTube videos. I'm always on SoundCloud. Like I'm always searching for music. I think that's the most important thing for DJs to always be working, you know? Whether it's uh, whether it's making mixes or even just listening to, to new genres or listening to new artists, it's it's your due diligence. It's your job. Specifically, like where, like let's say you want to give me like, you know, like my you top know, three like, spots, my top three spots to find yeah, music. But like really good music, like uh, what would you recommend? Like maybe a certain playlist. Like you know what's crazy? Know? It's not even playlists. It's I follow a lot of. Uh, I follow a lot of like a lot of different people on like my my spam Instagram account and some and they post gems on your stories. So like just just niggas that like are in important places but aren't in the limelight, you know what I mean? Don't 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 be don't be putting on a lot of music on like on their stories and stuff and that's where I grab and then it's just a rabbit hole. You search their IG and then you search them on SoundCloud and then you're finding this song and this song and this song and like I listen to a lot of mixes. I think female DJs are the best DJs in the world. I think women have the best taste in the world when it comes to music. So I listen to a lot of female DJ playlists. Uh, there's this, uh, there's this tandem in, in New York. Uh, I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to mess up their name, but like they're very good uh, tandem uh, DJ. They make, put a lot of playlists out and a lot of remixes. So I listen to that and I'm not afraid to message people and be like, yo, what song is this? Or message or send message be like, yo, what song is this? Cause I need to know, you know what I mean? I, I, I think I'm past being embarrassed of, of that. Like it's it's always cool being like, yo, I put you on, I put you on, I put you on. But someone's got to put you on to put other people on. You know what I mean? And that that's the beauty of the game. 
How would you define having a good taste in music? Great taste or good taste? Because that's like, I feel like great taste is like S level, you know what I mean? Not a lot of people have great taste in music. Like, I, say, you I know? think I have, you know? when you get praised constantly, you know what I mean? A lot of people have great taste in music. Like you, I think you have great taste in music, but like you would never say that you have great taste in music, you know what I mean? I think my ear is impeccable, but uh, like I'm, I'm always the first person to tell other people that they have a good taste as well, you know what I mean? I listen to a lot of bad music, but it's because I like certain things out of those songs, you know what I mean? Or I feel certain things out, out of those songs. So I think having great taste in music is, uh, it's very subjective, but you, if you know, you know type of thing. If you, if you know someone with great taste in music, you, you, you just know it. And I don't think they need to say that they, they have it, but a lot of people will say they have good taste in music, you know? But let's go back, let's figure out a song that you really like for a specific lyric that just kind of make you melt in a sense. I think it's gonna clown me, but like, when it comes to R&B specifically, it's not even just the lyrics sometimes. Sometimes it's the way they say, whereas it's just their, like, the way their vocal inflations, I don't know, it just makes you feel a certain way. It's like, wow, it's like, that was super powerful. Like some, they could be saying anything, but just the way they use their voice is just super powerful sometimes. So a lot of those R&B songs, especially because when I'm really alone, I'll be listening to a lot of soul music. So like songs like, like Teddy Pendergraph, like I Miss You, like that song is beautiful because I think like his harmonization at the start of the song is so strong, so strong. And like what he's saying is very like relatable but it's how he's saying it that's important. I think in music, it's how people say things. You could, you could say anything you want if you if you say it right, you know what I mean? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you can do that line from a song. A bar from one song? There's a bar, but it's not part of the song. It's part of the intro of a song. It's a, it's a song that just came out. It's called Neck and Wrist by Pusha Pusha T. And at the start of the song, he's like, you're supposed to put the, four, the first 500,000 in the safe and forget about it. Like, <laughs> that that's so, you like, if you know, you know, like, like, <laughs> if you know, you know, type of thing, you know, you're like, for me, you're, if you, if, if I, if I got a mill, I'm definitely, I, I always think about it. If you don't think about getting a million dollars every day, then your goals aren't that high. But I think about getting a million dollars every day and what I would do with a million dollars. Personally, I would put half away and I would honestly forget about it. The other half, I would divide it in pieces, either give it to certain people, investments, spending on myself, you know what I mean? But that half a mil, I'm not thinking about. That half, half a mil is emergency money. And I know they say like, you can't take it with you, but like that, that line really stuck to me because it's like, it's facts. Like you're supposed to, like my paychecks, I divide my paychecks and I forget about that money that I divide. Like I do my best to forget about it. When I was a kid, I used to get like, I used, and anytime I got a certain amount of money, I would literally hide it from myself. And like, when I clean my room, I'd be like, yo, here's a 20, that's crazy. You know, like you're supposed to hide the five, first 500,000, you know? It's kind of beauty of hip hop to someone who may not understand. Beauty of hip hop itself. I don't know if you ever had drive to, to want something or like any type of drive to want anything, then hip hop music is, you can relate to it because it's all about hustling. It's all about like, achieving what you want you know what i mean some niggas want the money the cars the hoes some niggas want uh social change economic change you know some people want uh to just boss up and you know you can find all that in hip-hop any anything you could find in any under any genre you can find in hip-hop and you can find it uh 10 times more abrasive 10 times louder in hip-hop how lucrative it is as a business or you know, for example <laughs> Tims. Like the shoes? Yeah, it used to be a construction group. Yeah. Now you can't buy a pair of Tims for under 250. No, uh, 220. I don't even have Tims anymore, exactly. bro. It's yeah. like, even Air Force Ones, bro. Sold Air out ever, Force, everywhere. You can't find them. Everywhere. Hip hop is the most popular genre in the world, man. So they can, they can name drop anything. There's a reason why, I don't know if this story is fake or if it's real, but Soulja Boy had the first iPhone. Like there's a, there's a reason why if, if it's true, there's a reason why they gave this nigga the first iPhone and they're like, yo, do your dance and hold the iPhone. Like, hip hop. Wait, 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 wait. Is this true? This, this is off, off what he said. <laughs> if it's true, there's, I, I, I completely understand the reason. He's a, he, Crank That was huge. 
This nigga's holding an iPhone instead of a Blackberry in 2000 and whatever, 2007, 2008, holding a, an iPhone instead of a Blackberry. That definitely changes the market. You know what I mean? You see videos with, you see videos and you see like, like frames of niggas holding certain uh, pieces of clothing or certain phones or anything or hyping up, you know, that's just, that's just promotion, that's marketing. You know, and I, hip hop is, is one of the biggest genres when it comes to marketing because you could, you could name drop a brand, like yo, Pop Smoke name drop Dior. Dior's skyrocket. Everyone's rocking Dior. Everyone got the Dior, Dior ones. Everyone got the Dior shoes, you know? Louis V was huge at one point. Everyone's rocking Louis V. You know what? All that, all that matters is the right person saying the right thing and your brand lasts off. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, bro. Yo, you know actually what I, what I want to say? Yo, everyone should not be impressed with that Jack Harlow song. It was so disappointing. I hear that. I knew you. Yo, it was so disappointing. Like, I'm a big, I, I was big on, yo, Jack Harlow might be that guy, like, but that song was super disappointing to me. Yo, speak on Jack Harlow. I feel like he was forced. I feel like he was forced to drop it. Now people are having mixed feelings about him. How do you people think? love him, bro. He has his own fan base. I know people are starting to have mixed feelings. I'm starting to see. What are your opinions? I think. Uh, I think he's. I think he could go the Drizzy route easily, because I think lyrically he's talented enough. But that last record had so much potential, sample-wise. I think it was very rushed. Uh. Yeah, I think it was very rushed. I think the hook was boring. It was just that one part. I think the verses were very mid, but uh, like that doesn't take away from what he can do. I just think he, like the remix might be fire. You know what I mean? He could do those 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 songs with no hook where he's just barring out. I think he has that potential. What you got coming up next? Where can people find you? Any last words? Uh, always working on mixes, so the next mix is always loading. Uh, I'm gonna be outside all summer. Everyone's gonna be screaming my tag. Uh, yeah, bro, like I got a tape coming, but it's probably gonna come next year. I'm working on it. So uh, you'll be definitely seeing that next year. But yeah, we just always working. Hopefully, hopefully 40 is outside by the summer. Hopefully all the Lucky 7's out by the summer. Like we trying to be outside. I ain't trying to be on lockdown again. <laughs>